Hi everybody. Before we get on to the painting, I just wanted to pop in real quick and say hi. Um, it's been a hot minute since I've done a video, so I wanted to say to those of you who've been subscribers and have been hanging around waiting for another video, thank you for waiting and still being here. For those of you who might be new or might be just be finding my channel, um, my name is Dawn. I'm the owner of Painted Willow Art, and my whole purpose with these videos is to try to make art, and in particular watercolor, accessible to people. Um, we we do away with having to have things realistic looking. My style is very whimsical, so that's what I teach. And as part of that, um, you know, things that are wonky are okay. Watercolor misbehaving is okay. So my whole goal with these is to um, hopefully um, encourage you to try making some art, even if maybe that's not something you've ever thought you could do before. So that's what we're doing here. I won't take up a lot of your time. We're gonna do something that looks like this today on with the video. Thanks everybody. Okay, so on to the painting. What we need for this today is some tape to taper paper off with. I like to use the Scotch wall safe tape. Um, however, you can use masking tape or painter's tape. If you do use masking tape or painter's tape, it's a good idea to rip a piece off and then either like stick it to your pant leg or something like that before you put it on your paper. Because sometimes those can be a little sticky and will rip your paper. We're also gonna need a pencil and an eraser a black pen to draw with, a brush. I'm gonna use a little bigger brush than I normally use. This is a size 10 round, and you can see um, that brush tip is pretty good size, and that's because we're gonna be covering large spaces with paint, and so the bigger brush will help us do that a little more effectively. This one's a nine, or sorry, a size 10 round. It's by Infinity Arts by Fibonacci. I love these brushes. A lot of you have asked me for quite a while what brushes I use and, and I haven't had a good answer because I hadn't found some favorites, but this is my favorite brush. So these are linked in the comments of the video. Um, so you can see that if you're interested. Off screen, I have my water. So I've just got a plate with three little jars of water on it. I do like to use more than one jar because I will often rinse my like reds and yellows in one jar, blues and greens in another, and then have another for clean water. Piece of paper, watercolor paper, 140 pounds or heavier. A board of some sort to tape it to. I like to use um, these canvas panels. They're just real thin and you can get them real cheap at the art stores. So I use those to tape to. And we need some watercolor paints. I'm using my set by Art Philosophy. This is the tropical set. And before we start taping, I'm gonna take just a spray bottle. I've got an old hair conditioner bottle that I filled with water. And I'm just gonna spray the tops of my paints and set this aside while I start taping my paper. What this does is let the paint start to um, soften up so that it'll be ready for us to use. So I'm gonna bring my paper and my board back over here. I am using a 9 by 12 piece of paper. You can use whatever size you like, but for this project it is better to have one that's wider than it is tall. Um, so we're going to divide it into thirds, that way we get three nice pieces. So what I'm going to do first is tape my edges. So I'm just going to take and tape all the way around the edges so it sticks to my board. I'm not really measuring anything. Um, I'm just going to do like a maybe a half an inch border. My tape is about an inch wide. So I'm just going to do it kind of half and half, half on the paper, half off the paper, all the way around. That's going to stick my paper down so that as it starts to warp as we're painting, it holds it down and it doesn't warp quite as badly. Um, watercolor paper is always going to warp when you paint with it just because that's the nature of water and paper. You can get thicker watercolor paper. You could get 300 pound paper. That doesn't warp as badly, but it is still going to warp a little bit. So um, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. So I've gone around and made sure all my edges are pushed down. That way my paint's not going to run under. If I do happen to have a spot I didn't get pushed down real good and the paint runs under, it's not going to be too big a deal and I'll show you why when we get to that point. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take two more pieces of tape and I am going to stick them on my paper, dividing it in thirds. I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing if they're not exactly even, that's okay. And I'm going to push those down. 
Now what those are gonna become is the border between my pieces. That, that's where the tape was. So that's a nice easy way to make sure I don't get any paint there and I don't have to be too terribly careful about painting and making sure that I'm you know, sticking to a border really well. So we've got that. Next thing we need to do is draw our flowers and we're not going to draw these really um, carefully, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So in the first one, I'm gonna do just a basic round flower if I got my lead out on it. And I'm going to do it towards the top of my box. And I'm going to let my petals be a little bit wonky. Because I think that adds to the charm of what we're doing. I'm not going to put a stem on right now. We'll do that later. In my middle one, I'm going to do a different kind of flower. So this one I'm going to start with like a V shape. And I'm just going to put a wavy line across the top of it. And then I'm going to come kind of off the bottom and bring a line up, not quite as far as the top of that, and put another wavy line. And same thing on that side. If you want to put another one, you can. Just come off the bottom and do kind of another one. So that we, in, we end up something um, like a, oh shoot, can't remember the name of the flower. Ah, anyway, there is a flower that looks like this. <laughs> and then on this one over here, I'm gonna do like a gumdrop shape. From the middle, I'm gonna come off with a great big petal. So I'm going to start and end fairly close to each other in just a big oval shape. And then from the corner, I'm going to kind of do the same kind of thing. So we end up with something like that. Okay. I did them in pencil a little thicker than I normally do so that you can see them on camera. Um, if you're doing yours, you might want to do them a little bit lighter, just simply because, remember, if you paint over this, you're not going to be able to erase it. We are going to outline these real loosely, so it may not matter, but if you have drawn them on fairly thickly, um, it might be a good idea to go back over and erase them a little bit. I'm not going to do it on mine because I want you to be able to see them um, here, but you can go over them real lightly with an eraser so that all you can see is just the out, you know, general outline of them so that you don't have those dark, thick pencil lines. So now what we're gonna do is paint our backgrounds. So we're gonna fill everything around these flowers with color. You can use whatever color you choose. I think on this first one, I'm gonna use um, a purple. So I'm literally just dipping my brush in my water, putting my wet brush in my pan of purple paint, swirling it around a little bit, and I'm gonna come straight over here. And I want this to be kind of loose. I don't want it to be um, an even wash of color. I'm going right up to the tape, you can kind of go over the tape a little bit. You'll see the paint beads up on the tape, and that's perfectly fine. That's what's gonna create our border. If you need more paint, Swirl your brush around in it again. If it's starting to dry, dip your brush in the water and then come straight back to your paper. And so we're just kind of filling in around these flowers. If you get a little bit on the petal like I did here, it's okay. And I'll show you why that's okay because we're going we're gonna to do these real loose, real easy. So just continue all the way around. Now normally, I would turn my paper because painting these up here in between these is a real awkward angle for my hand. I'm not gonna turn it just so I don't mess up anything with the camera. But when you're doing this at home, keep in mind that you can turn your paper. There is absolutely no reason that you need to keep your paper facing the same direction all the time. Okay, so we've got that filled in. If it started to dry out a little bit, like I said, dip your brush in the water. 
and come back and just kind of paint over it a little bit so that you've got nice and wet there. Now, the reason we want that still wet is because I'm gonna add a second color. I'm gonna come back with a little bit of pink. So I've just rinsed my brush off in my water so it's clean and run my brush through my pink pan of paint. And I'm just gonna splot on that pink paint here and there. Now, every time I have to go back to my pink to get more, I'm rinsing my brush first because as I'm doing this, I am picking up a little bit of the purple paint in the brush and I don't wanna get the purple paint in my pink pan. So every time I think I need more pink paint, I'm gonna rinse my brush first, then come back to my pink pan. So I'm just putting some pink in here and there and hopefully, hopefully that has picked up well enough on the camera. Looks like my light might be a little bit bad. But hopefully you can see where I've just splotched in some pink. And we're gonna do the same thing on both of these other panels. And I'm gonna put my paint off to the side. Um, you may or may not be able to see it. And I'm gonna use different colors. If you wanted to do all three of the same colors, you certainly could. I like to have a little bit of variety, so I'm gonna do some different colors. I think for this next one, I'm gonna do yellow. So I'm gonna do essentially the same thing. I am just swirling my brush around in my yellow pan. And then I'm bringing it over to the canvas or to the paper and just kind of splashing it around. I'm not being too terribly careful with it other than trying not to get too much in my flower. If I do get a little bit in my flower, it's not gonna hurt anything. And just kind of scrub it around on the paper. If you want to have spots where the yellow is darker, just go back to your pan, grab some more yellow paint, and bring it back on, kind of smush it around. I do want to add a second color to this. So I'm going to make sure that my paper is still wet. Wherever it's dried, I've just dipped my brush in water and I'm just kind of spreading it around a little bit. I'm going to come back with some orange for this one. And that orange is really, really vibrant. Don't panic if you put the paint on the paper and it looks like just, whoa, oh my gosh, contrast. Um, watercolor dries lighter than it looks when it's wet. And you can do what I just did there. I rinsed off my brush, came back with just water on my brush and spread it around a little bit. And that takes some of that, you know, that instantaneously, oh my gosh, bright out of it. So I'm just gonna kind of smush my orange around. I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna come over here and I think I'm gonna use a blue on this one. Oh, that's a good blue. So same thing, I'm using a good bit of water, pulling paint straight out of my pan. smushing it around on my background and just being a little careful around my flowers not to get too much paint up in those flowers and if you want to be really really careful you can if you don't want to you don't have to and that sounds just really weird to hear somebody say you don't have to be careful when you paint doesn't it how many times have we told been told stay in the lines don't go out of the lines Keep your colors where they're supposed to be. What fun is that? <laughs> okay. So I'm just going back to my blue pan, grabbing a little bit more blue here and there because I want there to be some darker spots. My background is still nice and wet. So I can just smush those around and because they're wet, they just kind of bleed out and blend into each other. So there we go. There's all the backgrounds. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry. If you'd like to, you could blow dry it. So whichever you choose, let it dry and then we'll come back and do the next part. Okay. Mine is dry, mostly dry. It's still a little bit damp, but I think that's going to be okay. Um, drier is better. And here's why. We're going to splatter some paint on these backgrounds and I don't want the spots of paint to to bleed out like it does when it's really, really wet. So if it's still a little bit damp, it's probably okay 
but we're going for mostly dry. And um, for mine, I'm going to splatter over the whole thing. If you wanted to keep like one certain color to this panel and one certain color to this panel and one certain color to that panel, you could take a paper towel and put it over the spot that you're not doing the paint splotches on. But I'm gonna do the whole thing on mine. I do, however, wanna try and protect my flowers a little bit. So I'm gonna take these pieces of paper towel and I'm just gonna kinda of tear them up a little bit so that I can cover my flowers. And it doesn't have to be exact just ballpark, something like that. So I'm just protecting the majority of my flowers from getting um, water spots on them. So nothing real scientific, just, just a little bit of something to block it. Now I'm gonna take a really wet brush and I'm gonna go dip it in some of my paint. I think I'm gonna start with pink and I'm gonna get my brush good and wet, load it up with a good bit of paint, and then I'm gonna take and just tap my finger on it, or you could tap it against your hand like this, and that's just gonna put splotches of paint all over the place. Some big ones, some little ones, it's all good. Now, if you're gonna do this, I will caution you before you get to splattering your paint, you might wanna make sure you don't have anything around you that's gonna get messed up because this will, um, <laughs> this will travel. Look at my, my plate here has some splotches of paint on it. So just make sure when you're doing this, you don't have anything around you that's gonna hurt it if it gets a little bit of paint on it. If you do, cover it up with some paper towels or a piece of paper or something. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. And I think I'm gonna use orange this time. And this orange is pretty bright, so we'll see what happens. And again, I'm just gonna tap my paintbrush, splatter some of these around, and there we go. Once you've done that, you can pick up the pieces that you use to protect your flowers, and you can see how well that protected my flowers. I don't have splatters on them. This one, I didn't have paper towel right there, so it did get a little bit of a splatter, but that's okay. It didn't, it didn't get a lot of it on there. So at this point, we need the splatters to dry as well. So set it aside for 10, 15 minutes, or go hit it with a blow dryer again. I'm gonna go stick mine under the blow dryer, and then we'll come back and finish these up. Okay. Um, we've got dry painting. Everything's nice and dry. No moisture at all. Paper's laid down nice and flat. Good to go. Um, you can test it. If you're not sure, just set your hand down on it and see if you come back with paint splotches. If you're going to do that test, set your hand down flat. Don't do this. <laughs> because if you do happen to have some wet ones, you're going to smear them. So just set your hand down on it and pull it back. We're going to take the tape off to finish the rest of this because the rest of this is um, drawing. We're, we're done with the paint, but I wanna take just a minute and show you all these nice bloom spots in the paint. And hopefully you guys got some of these too. Um, I don't know about any of you, but those bloom spots are largely the reason I hated watercolor when I first started learning it. Um, because the way I was taught was that you were going for smooth finishes and nice even washes and I just really struggled to achieve that. When I finally said screw that I'm going to embrace these blooms and I'm going to make them part of what I'm doing and let them do their thing and have fun, watercolor opened up for me. Um, these blooms happen when you've got more water in some spots than others and so the paint or the paper doesn't dry evenly. This dried faster than this did and, and so as that water dries and evaporates at different rates, it leaves these little outlines and bloom marks, and I just love them. So we are going to take our tape off. If you are concerned about your tape ripping the paper, you can go um, put it under your blow dryer for just a minute and warm the tape. Generally, warm tape is going to rip less. And so I'm just taking my tape off real carefully. So if it does start to tear the paper, I don't do too much damage. I am also not, you'll notice, I'm not pulling straight up and kind of folding it back on itself. Oops. Ripped my tape. Oh, for heaven's sakes, come on. The tape is not cooperating. I 
There we go. So I'm just going to kind of fold it back on itself. It's stuck to my thumb. And I'm just kind of folding it back on itself, taking it off slow. And you'll notice we've got some nice good lines. Now you may have spots. I've got a spot here where I didn't get it pressed down real well and the, the paint bled underneath. It's perfectly okay. And I'll show you why in just a minute because we're going to put some borders around these and fancy them up a little bit. And we can correct some of that with the borders that we're going to put on. And ultimately, we're not going for perfect anyway, because the whole idea of something being a little bit whimsical is that it's not perfect. It's got, um, I won't say flaws, it's got some little unique things to it. So there we go. I'm going to take my board out from underneath and just have this on my table. So the rest of this we're going to do with the pen and add our details in. And I'm going to zoom in on one of these a little bit. Okay. So we're going to start with this guy. And what we're going to do is outline these flowers, but we're going to outline them. Oops, sorry, I kicked the camera. Ah, earthquake. <laughs> We're going to outline these, but we're going to outline them very, very loosely. So I'm going to start with my circle in the middle and I'm going to go around it a couple of times, making sure that I don't go over the line the same way each time. So I get a little bit of a funky outline going and I'm going to do the same thing with my flower petals. I'm going to go about three times, making sure I don't go over the exact same line twice. And this is where I mentioned earlier that if you didn't erase your pencil, it's really okay because the way we're doing these, we're not being real strict about that pencil line anyway. And I also mentioned if you get some paint in the petals, by the time you get the outline on, especially if we're not doing a careful outline, it covers up some of that and it isn't as noticeable. So when I outline that, I'm just going over the lines a couple of times so that I have kind of a messy outline. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other two. So you can start on the line that you drew and then go over it again, just making sure not to hit the same line twice. And whether you go over it two times, three times, however many times is completely up to you until you get kind of the, the messy look that you want. And we're gonna do the same thing on this one. And same thing with these petals. The pen I'm using is a ballpoint gel pen. Um, you could use a Sharpie. You could use whatever black pen you want. This one is a Uniball Eye Micro. Um, it's a ballpoint gel, and I, I like the ballpoint pens better than the felt tip pens. It's just my personal preference, but certainly you can use whatever you would like for a black pen. So we've got our flowers outlined, and we're gonna do the same thing around the outside of the painted area. We're gonna outline it, but we're gonna do it all wonky. And that's where we're gonna correct some of this stuff. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit sideways just because it's a better drawing angle for me. And when I outline, let me show you on the back of this one real quick so that we don't have paint interfering with it. I'm not gonna draw a straight line around the outside. I'm gonna kinda wiggle my line around a little bit, do some squigglies, and do something more like that all the way around the outside. And by doing those squigglies and wiggles, it's gonna let me correct where some of that paint has gotten under the tape. So I'm gonna start here and just take your time doing this. You're not in a hurry. This is one of the fun things about art. If you don't hurry, and if you take your time and really pay attention to what you're doing, you might find that things like brain chatter quiet down a little bit while you're doing this. Muscles might relax. You can almost get into kind of a meditative state sometimes. And that for me 
is one of the best parts about art. So I'm just going to continue all the way around this first box. There's not really any rhyme or reason to my squiggles and bumps and lumps in my line. They're just kind of random. If you notice your hand wanting to try and start kind of doing a pattern, deliberately bump it out of that pattern because our brains do that. They, they want to do a pattern. So you might find yourself starting to do, you know, a bit of a straight line and then some jagged and then straight line and then jagged and straight line and then jagged. So if you find yourself in that pattern, um, you know, kind of pay attention and mentally tell yourself, don't do that again, do a squiggle or do something else and pull yourself out of the pattern aspect of it. Okay, so I've zoomed back out. I'm gonna do that exact same thing around these other two. So I'm gonna kind of speed it up here for a minute while I do that, and you do the same thing on yours. There we go. So now we've given our borders some personality. Now we're gonna make these stems really, really simple. We're essentially just gonna draw a straight line down towards the bottom. We're not gonna go all the way to the bottom. You know, maybe stop right in here. And as you draw your stem, most of it's gonna be a straight line, but then put just a little bit of a wiggle in it. So maybe this one I'm gonna do something like that. And for this one, maybe I'm gonna do something like that. So you can see what I did there. And same thing on this one. Maybe I'm just gonna put some wiggles in it here and there. So our, stem, our stems are really, really simple. We're not gonna put any leaves on the stems. We're gonna leave them at that. So at this point, um, if you really like kind of the the less is more look this could be done if you want to add a little more to it i tend to like to to embellish and add things to it you could certainly do that so i'm going to zoom back in and show you what i'm going to do here so on this flower i'm going to put kind of a squiggly line up each petal and then put a couple dots at the top just to give it a little personality if you want to, you can even just put some random dots in the middle of the flower. On this one, I'm just going to put some lines just to give it a little bit more personality. And I remembered what this one looks like. It looks like a California poppy to me. Now, I do think I want to give this one even a little more personality. So I'm just going to do some dots with some squiggly lines and run them down to the flower. This one, I'm just going to do a few lines like that in each petal, kind of curve them just a little bit. It gives that flower a little bit of dimension. I'm going to put the same lines with the dots on top out of this one. And I'm going to put just some little random dots right at the base of this part of the middle of the flower. So I've just given them a tiny bit of personality. Zoom back out, you can see 
even small things like that make a difference. Every little bit that you add like that gives it a little bit more personality. Now, again, if you wanted to stop there, you certainly could. I'm, however, not going to stop there. I'm going to play off of some of these dots on the background by drawing circles around them. And I'm also going to add some dot embellishments around the edge of my borders. Now you can, you can use whatever shape you like. I'm just a fan of dots. So I'm going to come in and circle a few of these here and there. And I'm going to add some random dots all the way around my frame. If you're doing the random dots around the frame, I suggest you do them in odd numbers. Like do ones, threes, fives. Odd numbers tend to be more visually pleasing. Oops, sorry, that one was off camera. And just circled around that one twice. And I'm gonna come up here and do the same thing on that one. So nothing terribly complicated. I'm just drawing circles around some of those. How many do you do that to is completely up to you. So as you're doing it, you know, kind of step back and take a look at it here and there and say, do I like how that is or do I want to do something different? Now, if you have really dark backgrounds on yours, you could use a white pen to do that instead of the black pen. Um, white pen on a dark background looks really, really cool. And I'm going to do the same thing on these other two. So there we go. Now you'll notice I wasn't terribly careful with mine. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm doing the dots fairly quickly. I'm circling fairly quickly. Nothing is precise and perfectly round, perfectly circular, because the whole idea of whimsical is that nothing's perfect. So everything on this is just a little bit wonky and that's part of the fun of it. So there we go. You have a completed painting at this point. Now, if you wanted to embellish it more, add more dots, add more colors, you could certainly do that. Um, you could come back in with maybe something like a Posca paint pen and add more dots in different colors, or you could splatter more paint on it. You keep going until you're happy with the way it looks. Um, I'm going to call mine good at this point. You should remember to sign your painting somewhere and date it. I like to make sure I put the date on it because it's always fun to look back over time and see how your skills have grown. Um, this one being done, now I started with a 9 by 12 piece of paper, so what do you do with this when it's done? This one has a lot of options. You could just stick it in a 9 by 12 frame as it is. I'm not sure if I can zoom out anymore. Um, I wanted to give you a further away look at it. But you could stick it in a frame just as it is, and it's going to be cute. You could go through and cut right up the middle of these white lines, and you could use these as bookmarks. You could frame them individually in long, narrow frames and have like a triptych look, so you'd have three of them. And then you could hang them however you wanted. You wouldn't have to hang them, you know, straight in a line like this. You could... Use the, you could do this same technique on the front of a greeting card. You can buy blank watercolor greeting cards. It's not going to be this tall, but you just make the flower shorter. But you could do this exact same thing on the front of a watercolor greeting card. So all kinds of options that you could do with this particular painting. Um, and I wanted to do this so that we had something kind of 
short and sweet and easy to get us back into video since it's been a little while. Um, I do have some more videos on the editing um, computer for you, so we'll have some more here before too long. But hopefully this has been fun for you. Um, you know, draw your flowers however you want to do it. You don't have to use the same three that I did. Use whatever colors you want, whatever size paper you want, and just go wild with it. As always, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. I have listed all the supplies that I used in um, the description of the video, so you can see those with links to where I got them. And um, thanks for being here. Thanks for sticking around. If you've been here for a while and, and have been missing the videos, I appreciate you hanging around. Sometimes life gets in the way of the fun stuff, but I, I think we're back to a spot I can start doing these more regularly again. And if you want to follow along on Instagram, I am at Painted Willow Art on Instagram. I've got more art um, tips there and some of my own art as well. So thanks for being here, everybody. Paint away, have fun, let me know how you do with it, and I will see you on the next video.